Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War in which we're playing as the Realm of Kyria. Now, I have been given a preview build of what the Realm of Kyria will be and which we're playing in. Things might not be fully done. This, at the time of this recording, is still in development. Once this is officially out for everybody, I'll come back and play as Kyria um, again. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it's based off of, loosely based off of ancient Chinese culture. So if you'd like to read about the Vermilion Realm of Kyria, a silent lamb, please go right ahead and pause the video. And then we're just going to scroll down here a little bit more. I actually read through all this as during my first campaign, uh, playing it off screen. Also, I do let you, want to let you know, there is a lot of reading. It's almost like a TNO version of a campaign where there's a lot of reading and a lot of things going on. Um, throughout this campaign, but I do want to say, like I said, the country's still in development, and I do want to thank the devs a thousand percent for giving me early access to seeing what this is all about, because the devs for Equestria War are absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing, So, and they care so much about their mod, and it's just awesome, so in the meantime, we're going to do this real quick, and what do we have? We are very, very, very basic, we're going to make some indus uh, industry, some artillery early on, we don't have very much here, we'll make a boat, and then we're going to make a combo because we're going to need that boat later on. But we shall begin in the Vermilion Realm. With the ratification of the Hyacinth Court and the departure of the Equestrian Delegation, it is time for the Matriarch Superior to bring the silence to an end in earnest and allow her, 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 allow her realm to focus on modernization and rejoining the global community. A grand assembly of the brightest minds, both within and without Kyria, will serve as a basis upon which to begin our modernization's efforts. So, we'll begin the all Kyrian plenum for national revival. And we get a dynamic modifier, and so we'll see what that's like overall in 20 days. And then we'll welcome the delegates. Delegates from across the realm are arriving in Vermilion on a daily basis, bringing with them their own experiences and ideas on how to propel Kyria into the modern era in just a few short years. Many more come from beyond its borders, educated in foreign nations and exposed to the culture. All their ideas will be useful in rewriting Kyria's future and starting a new chapter for the nation. So, basically, we're led by Rainshine. Uh, I was born April 2nd, 945 in Vermilion. Yeah. Matriarch Superior Rain, uh, Shine, has lived her entire life upholding the imperial decrees that instituted the societal and cultural stagnation and decay of the realm of Kyria, and never once did she imagine that she'd be the Kirin to undo them. The decrees had been issued by her mother, Matriarch Superior Noctilucent Charm, in 902, and when she passed in 971, Rain Shine swore upon her ascension power that she would maintain her mother's policies and devote her life to studying the way of fire and the teachings of the fire goddess Concord to protect Kyria. However, in 10... 06. An unexpected diplomatic mission from Equestria ventured into the isolated nation and reached Rainshine's corner of Vermilion. There, two bearers of the elements of harmony, Fluttershy and Applejack, argued that they had seen Karen living in poverty and squalor all throughout the realm as a result of the silence, and while it was effective in preventing uh, Nirik transformations, it needed an end for the good of all Kieran kind. They offered a question aid in getting the nation back on its hooves and range, and isolated from her subjects in the royal palace and oblivious to their plights, realized that continuing the silence would only spell doom for her subjects in the long run. Though she had sworn uphold her mother's policies, once Rainshine learned learned the terrible cost the silence had on the people of Kyria, she agreed to repeal her mother's decrees and end it once and for all. Now with the silence ending in Kyria, Rainshine has pledged to make up for her mother's mistakes and bring the Kyrian species into the modern age. But after 60 years of seclusion in Vermilion, Rainshine might find that her authority is nowhere near as strong as her mother's was a century ago. And the Hyacinth Accord, which I'm probably saying that wrong. Signed in 1006 between Matrix Superior Rain Shine and Equestrian Representatives Applejack and Fluttershy, both bearers of elements of harmony, the Hyacinth Accord established formal diplomatic and economic ties between the nations of Equestria and Kyria. Equestria would aid the realm of Kyria in affairs of modernization, a return for preferential treatment, and matters of geopolitics, trade, and commerce. The Way of Fire. The Way of Fire encompasses the omnipresent religious beliefs of Kyrian species, where a fastidious Devotion to the fire goddess Concord succeeded where conquest and diplomacy failed in uniting the Kieran species under one flag. The teachings of the way of fire encouraged friendly relations with one neighbors and strongly discouraged any thoughts and actions that could lead to a fail or a fall in the Nirak state, helping to facilitate the construction of a functional Kieran society. As part of its beliefs, all Kieran owe complete devotion or reverence to the Matriarch Superior, the divine leader who unites with Concord's a godly divinity upon her ascension and whose will is interpreted and executed by a hierarchy of priests and mystics gathered throughout the realm. Defiance of the Matriarch's decrees is considered blasphemy against Concord herself, and so the Matriarchs of Kyria ruled absolute theocratic authority. This is useful for keeping the populace in line with the Matriarch's desires, but less useful in facilitating the expression of new ideas and 
Vestiges of the Silence. Though the silence is ending in Kyria, the crippling effects it has left on our nation since its institution a century ago are still widely felt. It will take time and a concerted effort by our leaders and mystics to shake off this awful shackle of our past. So basically the silence was here and shut us out, um, shut down everyone, shut down Kyria to the world basically. And now we're trying to end it, which is hurting us quite badly. Um, we also have a lot of character journals, one for uh, Autumn Blaze, another for Winter Frost, Fickle Current, as well as The Rising Sun. But welcome the delegates after we do Daybreak over Vermilion. Matriarch Superior Rain Shine set her brush aside and washed as the last of the black ink dried on the flattened scroll of parchment before. Her. It had taken her weeks to get to this point, but now, for the first time in her 36 years of rule, she had signed an imperial decree that would be read by all throughout the realm of Caria. With that final brush struck and with the copies that the scribes would make in the mooring and distribute to the far reaches of the country, the silence her mother's legacy would come to an end after over a century of stagnation and decay. It did not make her happy, if anything. Rainshine felt nervous, wondering if what she was doing was the right thing for her subjects, subjects she had never met before. But her thoughts were stolen away from when a servant entered and announced that Autumn Blaze was waiting to see her. And the mayor in question entered a few moments later at Rainshine's behest. Autumn bowed before a matriarch, though Rainshine keenly noted the awe and reverence the lesser uh, Karen offered at her at her at witnessing her regal body and stood up. You wish to see me, matriarch? Autumn asked. A dead Rainshine said, and her magic lifted a separate scroll off her desk, neatly wrapped in a vermilion ribbon, and passed it to Autumn Blaze, who took it in her own telegraphic grip. With well, the silence ending, I'm bringing together Kieran from all across the room to discuss how we can rebuild our nation and bring it to the modern age. I'm calling the first all Kieran plenum for a national revival, and as the mayor was so instrumental in helping the question delegation reach Vermilion, I want you to be its premier. Autumn Blaze looked shocked at the sudden responsibility, but she nevertheless nodded and bowed again. I, I'm not so sure if I'm ready for that responsibility, Matriarch, but if you think so... Ranchion cut her off with a wave of her hoof and an assuring smile. You will do well, Autumn, I know this. Much. Get political power, get Autumn Blaze, more political power, more daily harmony support, and then we start losing more weekly stability. Oh, gee. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, that is not good. In which we do want to get to the three and a half year plan pretty quickly. The rapid modernization of Kyria will be a chaotic process that can only be sustained for so long. The Matriarchs proclaim the Grand Gallop onward, aiming to fast track a century's work worth of lost progress in three and a half years. Well, plenty of time. The plan will have to deftly manage the tumultuous transformations of Kieran's society and culture of Kieran's to, to emerge intact from this rough and hasty metamorphosis. So now we're losing political power every single day. This effect is, well, this is good. Uh, the Vestiges of Silence is destroying our political power game. My god, it hurts me so much. And weekly stability goes down by 1%. Oh, good lord, that pains me so much. But, a letter from Autumn Blaze. Dear Applejack and Fluttershy. <clears throat> oh, I hope this letter reaches you too. It's not like Kiri hasn't had a functional postal system in a century, right? The hopes that it go through just to send a piece of paper halfway across the world. I got a new job, Matriarch Superior Rain Shine. You remember her, right? The really tall Kieran? They decided to call Kieran from all across the realms of Vermilion to participate in the all Kieran plenum for National Revival, and she made me its premiere. Talk about a leap in responsibility, right? I guess the Matriarch saw something in me when I helped you two make the last leg of the journey from Massacre to Vermilion. It's a lot to take on, and I'm not sure I'm the best Kieran for the job, but I'll give it my best regard. Liz. We should see Vermilion now. When I left you, it was like a sleepy teenager asking for five more minutes of sleep, but now the city's absolutely bustling. I've never seen anything like it before. There's so many Kieran from all over the realm pouring in every day to attend the plenum, and there's this wonderful, colorful feeling of hope and excitement just buzzing through the air. I've spent a lot of time meeting all the delegates I'll be working with during the plenum, and the two in particular really struck out. The first is Winterfrost, one of our way of fire priestesses from Rhapsody, who's a bit of a stickler for tradition and knows way more about her fire goddess, Concord, than I could ever hope to learn. She's brought a whole bunch of priests and mystics from in from across the realm to participate in the plenum, and though I never studied her religion too hard, I'm sure we'll have lots to talk, to talk about. The other character is a fellow called Fickle Current, who's been living in Grafonia all his life. I don't even know what Grafonia was until last month, but he's the grandson of some business Kieran who fled the realm when the silence started, and he brought a lot of the Kieran diaspora back with him to start fixing up the homeland. They even arrived at the capital in automobiles imported from Griponia, which pretty much no Kieran in the capital had ever seen before. To say he made a good Ryan entrance would be an understatement. The thing that rubbed Winterfrost and her mystics the wrong way. The two of them don't seem like they got off on the right hoof to say, but I'm confident that with time we'll be able to smooth those issues out of the plenum. After all, we're all working together to better our nation, right? I hope you're doing well. Wish us the best of luck for the plenum because we're going to need it. Your friend, Premier Autumn Blaze. So, more supremacy support, get uh, fickle current, which helps us with construction, efficiency, cap, and daily supremacy. Uh, cool. I, I also add Winter Frost. More stability, ideology, drift fence, and daily support for unaligned. So, I don't want to lose too much stability. So, my goal is to minimize the amount of stability loss as fast as possible and get as much uh, political power, too. Because we're going to run out. I've done this before, and I've actually... We've, I've already done, in my first campaign off-screen, um, the Great Gallop onward, and it's successful. I think we went, I think it went harmonious, but we'll see. 
Um, because you can go pretty much any route. I've been told that there's like, at the time of scoring, like 16 routes. Not everything's done yet. It's technically still in development, which is fine. But, uh, the, the, there's a potentially like 16 paths for this nation, the realm of Kyria. Also, we might get to clear war upon. We're on a historical, but the Office of Transmission. Understanding the impossibility of having every Kyrian in the realm venture to Vermilion to share their ideas and complaints with the Matriarch Superior. Matriarch Rainshine has decreed that the Office of Transmission be established to receive letters and appeals from her subjects and bring them to her immediate attention so that they may be discussing during gatherings of the planet. Stability, cause I, like, we gotta focus on the stability loss um, as much as possible. This is not bad, more de I like, we need more political power too, so. I like the decrease in political advisor costs, even though it's really high. I'm gonna focus probably on re reassemble the banners last. We don't really need them as much, but the great the Grand Gallop onward. Also, I have no clear direction for my path. We could go harmonist, we could go supremacist, communist, non-aligned. We'll see what happens. Matriarch Superior Rainshine momentarily hesitated as she took to the podium placed on the steps before the Imperial Palace. Her red eyes shifted downwards and scanned over the hundreds, no, thousands of faces staring up at her. She would remind herself that this was the first time most of her subjects had ever seen her in person. Rarely had she ventured outside the palace walls all her life, and even rarer still there had been any occasion to speak to her subjects, or let them speak to her. Her ascension through her mother's funeral pyre had been a quiet and close, close affair within the palace walls, and only imperial proclamations to the Kieran of Vermilion would have let any know, any know that a change in leadership was taking place 36 years ago. Now, she stood before them as a new matriarch superior, ready to lead them out of the darkness of the silence that had stifled Kieran society for so long. My faithful and loyal subjects, Rainshine began, glancing down at the prepared speech in front of her, and then back at the crowd. I know that this is the first time most of you have ever seen your matriarch, but I know this is the first time you've ever heard my voice, but a new era for Kyria cannot begin without allowing you to meet me. I'm not my mother, I'm not the mayor who created the decrees, and the laws that created what we call today the silence. I'm not Noctilucent Charm, but I'm her daughter, and today I will begin the atonement for my mother's mistakes. Surprise murmuring passed through the crowd, and Rainshine let that proclamation sink in before continuing. I've set in motion a series of decrees and appointments that will bring about the end of the silence, she said. Today is the beginning of a new era for Kyria, but I alone cannot forge our future. It is time for all the Kyrian of the realm to join me in this future we create together. The Kyrian people must join me on a grand gallop onward, a leap that will see us modernize our industry, our technology, our agriculture, and our science. This realm has been entrusted to us by Concord, it was a blessing by our wisdom and favor. We are a Kyrian. We are an ingenious people, a people who are intimately familiar with the creative and destructive forces of fire. We'll use our gift to make the most of Concord's blessing through hard work, grit, and fervent devotion to the fire goddess. The realm of Kira will emerge from the sun to become a world power within a decade. There's nothing that we cannot accomplish together, so I ask you, Kira, another realm, will you join me in the grand gallop onward? Thunderous applause and ecstatic cheering was the crowd's response, seemingly audible across the entirety of the realm. The grand gallop onward begins today, and we begin a three and a half year plan and add modernization. Who needed stability? We do. Desperately. The brainchild of Imperial Premier, Autumn Blaze, the three and a half year plan recognized as a ferociously ambitious course of action, even by its most dedicated proponents, seeks to mark, make up for a century's worth of lost progress on transformation or transform the realm of Kyria into an industrialized nation by the end of year 1011. The plan uh, is the cornerstone of the all Kyria uh, plenum for national revival and assemblage of Kyria's best and brightest summon to Vermilion, at the behest of Matriarch Superior Rainshine, to guide the realm out of the science and into the modern era. Supported by Kira's friends in Equestria, funded by the wealth of the returning Kieran diaspora, fueled by the resurgent flames of Kieran patriotism, and driven by the indomitable will of the Kieran people, Premier Autumn Blaze believes that the plan can succeed, but only if the plenum learns to work together, in spite of their ideological differences, towards their shared goal of a strong, independent, and modernized Kyria. The fire rises in Kyria. The announcement of the three and a half year plan had been chaotic, to say the least. Not that Autumn had expected it, she certainly had, but she had hoped that it would be a little bit less chaotic than it was now. Now, with the wheels of the Grand Gallop onward officially set in motion, she found herself trying her hardest to stay on top of everything happening all at once. And that, to be quite honest, was an exceptionally difficult task for a mayor who had never entered politics before being hoofpicked by the Rainshine to be the Imperial Premier. One way she had tried to wrap her head around everything was that swiftly transpiring Vermilion was by inviting local leaders from across the realm to tea. Those meetings have been very fruitful. I should get tea myself. And Autumn felt she knew more about what she was dealing with in the realm because of them. And not only was she getting to understand the Kieran from each province and city better, she was starting to just see what problems had been festering during the stagnation of the silence that needed to be addressed. Case in point. An old banner Kieran from Verdant. An elderly mayor whose grandmother before her had served a matriarch Noctulicent. Charmed Banner Army, who had seen much uh, in her long life. The silence wasn't so bad in Verdant, the mayor said, only partly to Autumn's surprise. The older Kieran generally were familiar and comfortable with the stagnation of the silence and weren't keen to move out of it. There, the priests and mystics of the rising fire found a way to adapt the city to the decrees of the silence. They're nothing like the Kieran you uh, brought into Vermilion to dictate policy with wealth and pedigree, no. The rising fire understands the common Kieran, farmers and uh, fisher Kieran, the poor and uneducated. Some here in Vermilion call the rising fire a heresy, but to the Kieran of Verdant, 
and the poor Kieran everywhere wh whom they appeal to, the Rising Fires of Salvation, a helping hoof for their way. A fire abandoned them, remember that, Premier, as we shape the future of a realm and the majestic buildings of Vermilion. The Kieran who argue with you on the floor are not the only ones who will live in the future you create, and if a push comes to shove, they certainly aren't the most numerous. The success of this Grand Galapond will be decided by the government, or governed, <clears throat> by the governed, not the governing. Remember, the poor or some Kieran else will. This rising fire heresy, they could prove problematic down the line, but we're not there yet. Ah, so there's a change. That's a diary entry, as of late. And this is from Autumn Blaze. Oh, no, this, no, this is from Rising Sun, my bad. This is from uh, Rising Sun. As of late, I've spent less time traveling the roads than I've stayed in, than staying in one place and writing letters. It's a queer transition, and one that I'm not used to, but it's proving to be more effective. Since the transmission office was open to receive petitions from Kieran all across the realm, my followers and I have spent our time writing letters on behalf of the common Kieran throughout the realm acting as representatives to petition the matriarch superior through the office. It is a change that benefits the common Kieran more than their leaders at the plenum would believe. The office of transmission is designed to serve as a direct interface for the matriarch to hear from her subjects that when they cannot make the journey to Vermilion to petition her in person, but a large portion of our nation is still illiterate, meaning it's useless to them. My fellow mystics and I are all literate by our training and education, so we visit these Kieran, put their complaints and desires on a paper for them, and make sure they are received by the matriarch herself. This has been a great boon to the commoners, as otherwise they lack the necessary influence to make their voices heard. Especially by the leaders of the plenum. The priestess Winter Frost is insular and myopic, and see any Kieran speaking out about how the way of fires failed them as a heretic arrival, uh, uh, heretic arrival to be ignored. Fickle Kern is indifferent. He is foreign-born and foreign-educated and sees himself above the afflictions and desires of the commoners, viewing them only as tools to be used for his own personal gain. And Premier Autumn Blaze, though well-intentioned and caring, is naive and inexperienced and simply lacks awareness and know-how to address this problem. The harsh realities of modernization are leaving us common Kieran behind, and so some Kieran must serve as their herald and champion. Just as I have always faithfully served Concord, so too shall I serve the poor and downtrodden of Kyria. And as they realize their voices are being heard and their complaints are being addressed, the common Kieran of the Rome will remember who listened to them and who fought on their behalf, and they will remember that it was the rising fire that saved them, not the way of fire. So, where are we at now? Eventually, we're going to need call upon the Diaspora. I think I'm saying that right. I could be, I could be wrong. General entry for a fickle current. Just with concern, concern, or better political power. Oh, political power would be nice. Yeah. Because more political power is good down here, too. Oh, this would be good to do, yeah. More weekly stability, political power gain, consumer goods, replace undisturbed isolation with civilian economy. This is a good one we need to hit hard. Um, wow, that's pretty good too. Plus 0.5 political power, it hurts our stability a little bit, but that's a lot. We'll do this one, dispatch the envoys. While those living in Vermilion learned almost immediately that the imperial decrees that created the science have been repealed, there are countless thousands of Kieran living in rural villages who are still unaware that their fortunes are soon to be changed for the better. Imperial her heralds shall venture forth throughout the realm and find every last village to share the Matrix's good news. The Winged Body in Civil War. So we can accept petitioners throughout the silence. The Vermilion Court was closed to the Kieran of the realm, and the Kieran could claim they had seen the Matrix appear in the flesh numbered only in the dozens. With the silence ending, Matrix appeared at Rainshine as a set of regular schedule 70 days of open court, where petitioners could see her and make their voices heard. The may act of seeing Kyria's divine ruler and allowing her to hear their problems has greatly restored the faith of our people and the intentions of the Matriarch, and the, our belief in the success of the great, uh, a Grand Gallop onward. We lose weekly stability, which we can afford right now, get more uh, stability, but, or a reply to letters. Well, not every Karen can venture to Vermilion to see the Matrix appear at Rainshine personally. Establishing the Office of Transmission, uh, has created a way for uh, concerned Kieran throughout the realm to send letters to the Matrix court that are then presented to her. And this way, even Kieran at the fringes of her realm can feel like their voices are personally hurt by the Matrix and in turn, Concord herself. Um, we're losing political power anyways, which I don't want to lose any more. I'm going to be kind of dumb here. I'm going to click on both. So this way, uh, we get plus 0.5 weekly stability with three more in the end. And we lose, we gain 5% more political power and 75 in the end. So, this has been a little better, and we're stopped uh, losing so much stability currently, as we reestablish rulership to really focus on the peepee. Throughout the silence of a century-long stranglehold on the realm of Kyria, the absolute authority of the dynasty warned or waned throughout the countryside as contact with the Vermilion ceased to exist. A fresh round of imperial decrees and a reassertion of Matriarch Rainshine's divine authority will begin to reassert her authority over the realm, though some might chafe under our resumed governance. Pirate race from the Auburn Isle. Oh no. Autumn Blaze skimmed through the last report attached to the Imperial Census of the Southern Coast before setting it aside so far. 
She had read 15 reports from the Imperial administrators who had visited the coastal towns to take stock of the situation along Kira's coastline, and each of them had been largely the same. Punctuating all the droll figures on population numbers, tax determination, and analysis of the local economy were reports of pirate attacks and raids. Autumn knew that there was a strong pirate presence in Auburn Isles, where an entire armada of pirates operated out of the port of Naka. And she had been aware that they, they somewhat regularly raided the, raided the coastline for goods and bodies of press and service. But the caveat that bothered her in each of these reports was that they were apparently getting more frequent and destructive. What had once been a regular occurrence for these towns was beginning to happen with a consuming amount of regularity. Pirate attacks were surely increasing and growing more organized than the red sails of the pirate junks had ever been uh, spotted prowling off the coast of the great Melifu uh, uh, Melifu River, searching for ships that prey on carrying goods out of the Cairn heartlands. It was a bold move given the number of ships that ventured across those waters, and Autumn didn't like that one bit. For now, though, the pirates were still openly raiding small fishing villages and coastal towns, and St. Clair more populated and patrolled locales. Or lo locales. But it couldn't be denied that the increasing occurrence of attacks in the wider range of pirates seemed to be patrolling was a bad omen for things to come. When the pirates were growing bolder, then it would only be a matter of time before they started attacking more lucrative targets. And with the realm still struggling to pull itself out of stagnation and decay of the silence, the last thing it needed right now was a series of pirate attacks destabilizing the coastal economy. Something would have to be done to stop the pirates before this problem spiraled out of control, or the consequences would be severe. We can't afford to let the pirates have free reign over coastline. As we want to reestablish rulership. Oh, terrible. Oh, terrible. Oh, it went down even more. Oh, God. Not good. A letter from the Premier. The most divine matrix period. Today marks a week since you decreed that the Imperial Heralds would fan out across from the realm and deliver the news of the all Kieran plenum for a national revival to the Kieran of your domain. I'm pleased to report that the decree is proceeding swimmingly, apart from a few hiccups here and there, and that your subjects are finally learning that the silence is over. I've already been receiving reports from the envoys in the field that many towns and settlements are taking to the streets with joy and excitement. I understand the feelings perfectly. You, Matriarch, are blessed with a lifespan that lasts twice as long as the rest of us, thanks to Concord's divine favor, so time must seem to feel twice as fast. Sixty years is hardly half your strength in lifespan, but an entire generation of Kieran has been born, raised, grown old, and is now passing on in that same time, having only known the silence of their entire lives. And a century from now, the silence will have only been a fraction of your life. What has been come to dominate the lives of all your subjects, ending it now and starting a new chapter for the Kieran species fills all us with joy and excitement at what tomorrow brings. The hardships we were all born into and lived through will soon feel like a distant memory now that we all together get to shape our destiny, and for that you have won the undying love and devotion of all your subjects. I don't think I can possibly overstate just how great a change this will be for all of us. Even so, I know this won't be easy, nor will the future we create for Kieran be whatever can, whatever Kieran desires. Some Kieran want to rapidly modernize us to catch up to the rest of the world, while others are far more cautious remembering the disasters of modernization under your mother's rule. There will probably be bickering and arguing and fighting, but good things don't come to those who wait. They have to be fought for, and that's what we'll be doing all the plenum. With the guidance, I know we can create a bright new future for all Kieran, and I'm thrilled to serve by your side. Let's do this together, and let, let's do it right. Your devoted servant, Premier Autumn Blaze. Awesome. These, these are good ones again. The Autumnal Autumn. Autumnal Premiership. I can't speak. New standing army is okay. Uh, I like the political power. I do want to not do this one yet because we do lose weekly stability more. Imperial Constitution is not bad, but I want to race down to this one. Restoring the bureaucracy is important. Um, so you get down there, you got to do. Uh, let's see, you need both these, don't you? And more than 100 political power, which is going to be a little difficult later on. Yeah, we need both these. So we need this one. To do this one. But to do this one, we need this one and this one. Stability, political power, the Reform Bureau. The Reform Bureau is a centralized executive body created for the all Kira plenum for the national revival and granted a limited autonomy or a limited amount of imperial mandate by the matriarch herself. As serves as a central governing body of the rapidly changing realm, it is here that the final drafts of bills are hammered out before being presented to the matriarch superior. Yeah, it's going to be important to keep that much more political power. Oof. As we reestablish re rulership. Heritage starts to build a little more, but that plus 0.5 political power is going to be crucial for us. A missive from Hyacinth. To Premier Autumn Blaze, I am sending you this urgent message requesting support for the Kieran of Hyacinth in recovering from a pirate attack. According to the locals, about three days before its imperial delegation arrived in the city to research the Matriarch Superior's authority over the coastal town, a large pirate armada appeared on the horizon and stormed the port. The pirates swiftly blockaded the port, disembarking from the ships, and stripped down the town bare of any and all the valuables the townsfolk, townsfolk possessed even pressing some of the villagers into service aboard the ships before embarking again. Such raids are not uncommon, the villagers tell me, and have been somewhat regular occurrence for decades, ever since a large pirate haven was established on the Auburn Isles just off of the Ossinth's coast. The pirates do not kill or burn, I am told, as they treat the coastal villages like fruit-bearing trees will be cultivated and harvested from the time is right. 
Yet the frequent raids on these villages have stifled their growth and left them too weak to fend for themselves. Every village I visited along the coast told similar stories. It's clear that something needs to be done, but until we can rebuild a navy of our own, it seems unlikely that anything can be done. How are we supposed to reassert the matriarch's divine rule over all the realm if we cannot protect those living on our coasts? One way or another, all these pirates must be brought to heel and their armada disbanded. It's only the way it's the only way to create peace and prosperity for the fishing villages and harbor towns along the coast. Until the pirate menace is dealt with, we will struggle to truly end the silence in all of Kyria, and our efforts of modernization will never be successful. Please bring this matter to the Matriarch's superior's attention at the first chance you get, your subjects depend on it, our Matriarch's loyal servant, Firecracker. How do we stop pirates when we don't have a navy? Oh, we've got a ship. That's what we've got. And that's technically where you're going to have to end up being Arctic Flash, because uh, I think you need the... which one of these do you need? The Vault of the Eastern Seaboard is not bad. Fragment Flotilla. So, Blue Flame of Fury. Of Fury. Reclaim Auburn out. Uh, do you do this one, you get here, but... I'm not going to do that. I'm going to train, though. Anything interesting here? Oh, smoke screen is okay. So we have the Matriarchal Retinue, which is okay with our support artillery. Kieran Banner, which is actually probably what we're going to use in the end. With no manpower. And the Banner, Kin Banner Kieran Levy, just militia. Kind of sucks. Three Strengths Campaign. The modernization efforts of the Plenum have long been championed by the Three Strengths Campaign which promote harmony, heritage, and homeland as its three most important values, however. It's becoming increasingly clear that each strength has been taken up by different cliques as their championing points. <clears throat> One of these cliques will naturally resonate more with the Kieran people than others. Ah, so now this is the first general entry of Autumn Blaze. Reform, reform, reform. I don't know how many times I had to say that word during the first meeting of the Reform Bureau. Oh darn, I just did it again. But today was a very busy day. Since the Matriarch Superior made me the Premier of the Plenum, I still don't know why she trusts me with that much responsibility. I was automatically made the head of the Reform Bureau, which was basically just a fancy way of saying I'll have to be responsible for getting all the influential delegates from the plenum into one place where we can discuss the specifics of how we want to enact things that can get passed on the debate floor. We are essentially the central government of Kyria, and we act with a limited amount of imperial mandate that the range Shine blessed us with. That's a lot, a lot of responsibility for a young mayor from Massacot to handle, but I'll do my best to save the rum and not let the matriarch down. Unfortunately, trying to get every Kieran to work together is like herding cats. And I've never had a pet cat before, let alone two or three or four, so I'm a little short on experience. Fickle Current brought in a lot of his buddies from overseas, and though the capitalists are providing a lot of capital and ideas, we need to get this whole modernization thing moving. I feel like to stop them from reshaping Kyria to suit their interests over those of the common Kieran. At least I have someone of an ally in the Priestess Winter Frost, who was wary about how rapid modernization will alter the social fabric of the Kieran species, but I often feel like she goes a little too far. If you try to suggest anything that changes the way Kieran society functioned in the silence, she usually pushes back hard, and I'm afraid of how uh, of any hint of modernization could possibly weaken the influence of the way of fire in our culture. I ended up playing middle mayor between the two and finding a compromise that helps out every Kieran, but I don't know how much longer I can keep that up if Winter and Fickle don't get on the same page. It's exhausting, I know how I wish I had Applejack and Fluttershy here to help us show uh, how to follow in the equestrian model of harmony. But I'm not going to give it up. Not at all. Even if it's exhausting and draining, I'm going to keep going back into the bureau and doing my best to move things along for the good of all the realm. Hopefully, as we keep working together we'll be able to uh, get every Kieran to have fair and honest debates about how we're going to modern as a country. We all, we all have a common goal, after all. It falls on us to figure out how to get, get to it. I'm confident that we'll find a way to make it happen. Good. Fantastic. Before we start losing more stability, god dang it. Um, in the Vermilion Court, the delegates at the plenum have begun to coalesce into different factions with their own ideas for how the modernizations of Kira should look, far from the heterogeneous mixture of ideas and experiences that our matriarch originally hoped for. But even still, the three parties that have formed at the plenum do not represent the voices of all of our subjects. Oh, god dang it. Now we're losing more stability. And we're going to need that political power. So that's looking better already for political power. Look at that. That's, we're barely losing any. War propaganda would not be bad, but harmony, heritage, and homeland. Oh boy. As all Karen plenum for national revival goes on, what was originally called for reform, harmony, heritage, homeland, has become a rallying cry for the three cliques that have swiftly formed with the plenum's maturation. Mayor Autumn Blaze and her supporters advocate for harmony, a platform of liberal reformism that seeks to align the realm of Kira with the ideas and tenets of the equestrian model. The renowned priestess Winter Frost and the religious sect of the plenum believe in the Kirin heritage, so you can remember the traditions that once made Kira a wonderful and prosperous nation, and to remember the way of life, and the fire gun is concord for bringing the oftentimes and the Kirin race together into a peaceful theocracy. An ideal once not impossible six centuries ago. Those who have made <clears throat> uh Homeland, the rallying cry, are led by a fickle current. The grandson of business Kieran, who fled the realm a century ago when the silence began, and who has now become the leading voice for the return of the Kieran diaspora and uh, literary 
oh, literati, literati, literati. All three have very different ideas how to modernize a nation and shake off the vestiges of the silence, and in many aspects their ideas are incompatible with each other's. As the debates and deliberations drag on, one of these factions will eventually find an edge over the competitors and win more delegates over to their side. The question now becomes the following, which faction is truly one blessed by Concord's divine wisdom? Mere Adam Blade's liberal reformism? It's not bad. Winter Frost's conservative traditionalism? Fickle Current's nationalist revivalism? Oh, Stability's nice, and we're going to need some stability. But that PP? Oh, I kind of have to go with that. So now we're positive. We're actually getting one a day. That's kind of fantastic. Curious covered cage. The Kieran sitting across from Autumn Blaze unsettled her. There was something about him that warmed his way uh, under her scales and made him itch. Maybe it was the way his eyes seemed to pick her apart whenever she spoke, or the slight crookedness of his muzzle, a memory from some traumatic injury long in his history. More likely, it was the way he spoke and what he spoke about that made her feel ill at ease. Not even Matriarch Rain Shine sitting by her side made her feel any better. Thank you for that lengthy history in the banner of the covered cage, Amber Wayne, Autumn said, picking her up her notes and jogging the pa uh, uh, pages together. I knew that Matriarch uh, Noctilucent Charm recruited an organization so low and dedicated to enforcing the policies of the silence. Coming from a small farm of Mascot, I would never imagine that one of the Matriarch's banners was dedicated to rooting out any attempts to turn back the clock and go back to what life was like before the silence. That's quite a doozy. It was necessary, Amber Wayne grunted in a gruff voice, curious survival depended on making sure the silence was followed. We worked in the shadows to make sure that it was. My family and the families of all my Bannerkin and comrades have spent generations enforcing it without thanks or recognition for our hard work. Now, we've always been loyal to the Matriarchs, first of the Noctilucent Charm, and now you Matriarch Rainshine, and now, with Kira changing, the silence ended. I come to you on behalf of the banner of the covered cage to ask for official recognition of who we are and what we did in the century since 903. It's time that we are no longer forced to live in secrecy, but be rewarded for our faithful work. Do trust, do this, matriarch, and we shall serve you however you see fit, with no more reason to hide in the shadows. Before Rainshine could respond, Autumn nervously cleared her throat. Yes, well, we're all thankful for your work. I know I want recognition too if I had what you guys did, but matriarch, we can't be too hasty here. When Rainshine raised an eyebrow, Autumn sucked in a deep breath. The banner of the covered cage, well, from what Ember Wayne told us, they check out... The story we've heard from peasants of farming villages about organized groups of bandits that would sack towns that try to reorganize their own societies during the silence. I don't think Ember is going to try to deny it, his, that his group was involved in that, so we need to be careful here. Do we really give official recognition to the covered cage, given how the public would feel about that, or do we just keep this under the rug for the time being? The band of the covered cage will be recognized for their hard work. Ooh, this civilian political power. It's too soon to acknowledge the banner's existence. Ooh, that's the easy way out. We're not going to take the easy way out. We're going to go with this one. And then, ooh, the Laws of the Realm is not bad. That's good to do, too. And we will, we might do that later on, too. But, the Council of the Verdigris Rotunda. The Morning Rotunda Secretariat. Had long served as the Matrix Superior Counseling Body, offering advice and interpretation to the Concord's will to the Matrix to inform a rule. Since its conception has been entirely populated by priests and mystics from the Way of Fire, whose concerns are often more spiritual than temporal, a new Morning Secretariat must be appointed to guide Kyria in a new era. In the Hall of the Matrix Superior. Matriarch Superior Rainshine watched the delegates assemble in their seats for the day session of the plenum with a note of concern. But it started out as a heterogeneous mixture of Kieran, and their ideas at the beginning of the plenum had differentiated itself into three homogeneous groups as time went on, with the Kieran attaching themselves to the cliques of like minded individuals and all sitting around and grouped together. Discussion and mingling between the delegates had all but ceased, and now the delegates had firmly attached themselves to their preferred leader and ideals. Premier Autumn Blaze and their liberal reformists, Priestess Winter Frost and her traditional sect, and the business cure and fickle current and his cabal of capitalists, those three factions had turned the free-flowing exchange of ideas into hard-fought political debates, most of which were only resolved when two cliques ganged up on a third to enforce their compromise over the party, other party. Her presence as Matrix appeared forced the delegates to take a step uh, back and calm down when they began to get angry, lest one transform into an Eric in the presence of the Matriarch, yet even still, tempers readily flare. But even her powerful and respected presence nearly failed to control in the assembly when the doors opened and a large procession of priests and mystics in vibrant red and gold robes entered the hall, followed by a score of poor farmers. They had barely begun to fill out a bank of empty seats before Winter Frost jumped to her hooves and spat in the direction. Heretic, the priestess raged, pointing to hoof directly at the fiery mare who led the procession in. You twist, your twisted mockery of the way of fire is not welcome before the sacred presence of our matriarch superior. Leave now or I will drag you down the palace steps and toss you out of Vermilion and myself. When her frost fellow mystics joined their voices to hers, and even some of the fickle currents clique in Autumn Blaze's allies began to boo and hiss at the premier as the premier struggled for control. In none of that seemed to disturb the newcomer's leader who simply turned about to face Rainshine directly and bowed lowly. Divine matriarch, my name is Rising Sun and my followers have traveled a long way to meet you, she said. Her voice was shrewd and sweet, and when Rainshine looked into the mare's eyes, she saw a cunning cleverness hiding in her fiery depths. 
You have called in the Kieran of the West of Answer. The Path of the Rising Fire is here to participate in this renewal of our great nation, so long as you will have us. The Kieran of the West shall be allowed to stay. What can we support? We lose stability. We cannot give Heretics a voice in Vermilion. I really want to do that one. I really do. But can the Rising Fire be trusted? So now we get some more daily economy support. Because I, I I just want to be line. And this is not much. It's only point one more political uh, stability, but still not bad. I think there's other stuff here too that gives us more weekly stability as well. I'm not sure where at though. Complete the roads, of course, which is good. Carry on the world stage is not bad. Not extremely important to do right now, though. Build railways, urban-led modernizations. Breakneck industrialization. After a constitution. More political power would be nice, though. The role of the Matriarch Superior. The position of the Matriarch Superior is one of the unlimited divine authority bestowed on the Matriarch by Concord herself. Her powers are broad and poorly defined, and any decree she issues is to be considered a law as soon as it's proclaimed. Such archaic methods of governance have no place in the modern nation, and it is so it's time to codify the powers of the Matriarch Superior in her government. Showdown at the Rotunda. And now we move on to the next topic, the revitalization of the Morning Secretariat, as the official advisor to the Matriarch Superior on matters of state. Autumn Blaze looked around the plenum, trying to assess the thoughts and feelings of her peers as they brought the topic to the table. She had to wait long for Winterfrost to speak and frown when the priestess waved a dismissive hoof. The Morning Secretariat has continued to serve its function unperturbed by the silence. The mystics have served her matriarch superior well, as I'm sure she can attest, and her mother before her. I move we dismiss this topic and focus on more important matters at hoof. Autumn quickly shook her head and launched into her tour. The mystics of the Way of Fire have a sole representation to her matriarchs for hundreds of years. During the silence, they were so focused on mediation and spirituality that they failed to clue the matriarch in on how the common Karen suffered under her mother's decrees. The silence wouldn't have lasted this long had the morning secretary and a few, had a few voices. We were obsessed with the way of fire on it. We need more diverse representation. I move that we elect a new morning secretary for the members gathered here in the plenum to advise a matriarch on matters for a rapidly changing state as we modernize. A grief fickle current cut in from across the room. Our matriarch, blessed as she is with Concord's wisdom, would not be well served by traditional stuck in the past when the realm's future is well the future. I will support your plan, Premier, but in return I ask a favor. The business Karen made a show of clearing his throat and raised his voice to make his words clear to the rest of the plenum. Ever since the tragedy of 902, the merchant class has been banned from seeking audiences with the matriarch, let alone approach her in any official capacity as an advisor. I ask that the matriarch or merchant class be allowed to serve on the secretariat, and additionally, 10 of the 70 seats will be reserved for business and industry representatives. It is they, after all, who are providing the backbone for the realm's modernization. If the merchants have a vo voice, then the common Karen should have one too, Rising Sun quickly added. How can the secretariat advise the matriarch if no Karen represents the laborers in the fields and the workers in the factories? I move that the Secretariat should be an elected body open to any Kieran who wishes to run. It is the only way to ensure every voice is heard. Only allow delegates from the plenum of the Secretariat. Pickle Current shall have his ten reserve seats. The Secretariat shall be open to all Kieran. Ooh, that's not bad. I don't want to lose any more stability, though. I'm not necessarily for communism, either. I, I, I might be going down a supremacist path, maybe. I like the 100 PP, though. Uh, I'm, you know what? We might go down the supremacist path for this one. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of liking it right now. Grand Galloping Gala. We were not invited. 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 Huh. Also, this one's also really good to do too. The this one because this stuff is pretty good for what we need here. Um, you know what? The odd turn. Autumnal premiership. We'll do this one next because it is between May and August. So we might. Oh, I don't think I we'll have enough time for this one. Dang it. You get more stability though, I guess. Premier Autumn Blades is a young Kieran left in charge of the greatest undertaking in Kieran history, with consequences that will shape her history for decades to come. It's a lot of responsibility for one mayor's shoulder, but she is determined to shoulder, and the Matriarch Superior Rain Shot is entrusted in her almost unlimited authority to choose the path of the nation's modernizations. Honestly, even though we're doing the thing right now, uh, we don't lose any we really don't lose any stability, even though it seems like we are losing stability anyways. Next time I'm just gonna do reply to letters, because that's better for us right now. Uh, at least we get three more stability in the end, but still. Because we don't get any more right now. And this one actually hurts us. So doing this one doesn't is not as worth it, accepting petitioners, but in accord with Concord. Priestess Winterfrost did her best to hide her scowl as she watched her matriarch superior surrender her absolute authority over the realm with ink brushed on paper. The entire plenum had been moved outside to the steps of the Vermilion Palace, where Rainshine had led her latest imperial decree to the Kieran of the capital, turning its words into law with her divine voice. But those words were not hers. Instead, they were the conviving traitor's words read through the matriarch's voice, turning blasphemy to religious creed and curtailing Concord's divine influence in the world by weakening her avatar. 
and made her blood boil, but she kept it all hid under a neutral expression. A priestess of the Way of Fire cannot go against the decisions of her matriarch, no matter how much they irked her. Instead, she directed. Her eye retorts fickle current and, her co and his cronies, their pleased expressions sickening her to her stomach. Now, two days have passed since Current and the rest of the Griffonia educated elk had proposed a charter that stripped away much of the Rainshine's power under the pretense of simplifying and codifying the Roman's governance. Her divine authority had been transformed into legal power and stolen from her court by the Morning Secretariat, which Current and his friends had a very strong hoof in. Though the charter recognized Rainshine's divinity, if reaffirming her union with the Concord at her ascension when she emerged from the flames of her mother's funeral pyre, it also removed her ability to speak directly for Concord and rule by decree, instead of forcing her to earn the Secretariat's consent before making a decision that would affect the realm. Well, the matriarch's court would remain open for petitioners. The matter of ruling would now be handled almost exclusively by the morning secretariat. How foolish rising sun said by winter frost aside. To think mortals could bend a goddess's divine will to their own uses, perhaps the way of fire has lost the way. Quite heretic, winter frost hissed at her. I do not need you making today any more tolerable than it already is. The rising sun merely chuckled at that. The rising fire supports our matriarch, she said. This chart is just an unfortunate stopgap for the challenges we face. Our way survived the silence, and it'll survive this too. She gave Winter a sly smile she had. Perhaps one day you and I will see eye to eye on these things. We need not be enemies, not when our way of life is at stake. The way of fire must adapt like the rising sun, or all is lost. Ooh, a general entry for Winter Frost. And more political power. <coughs> Concord, my good goddess, if you have seen fit to challenge me in such a way, please lend me the strength to pass your test. The way of fire is beset by heretics, and traitors at every corner today. Fickle current, and his cronies. Orchestrated a takeover of the government through paper and honeyed words. They stole the divine authority that the Concord blesses our matriarch with for themselves, turning the morning secretary into the central governing body of the realm, and removing matriarch Rainshine's ability to rule by imperial decree, as has been done in the realm for centuries. All of this was done under the pretense of codifying laws and political power, but is nothing more than attempting to put the rule of mortals over the divine will of Concord. The realm is slowly losing the religious foundations that made it so wonderful and stable, and no care on outside of my followers seemed to care. We were squabbling a we were a squabbling mass of petty tribes and villages before the way of fire saved us all. What is to stop us from returning to this dreadful way of life should we forget the importance of its five tenets? In time, we believe the Kirin of Kira will see the truth of what Fickle Current and his allies are, corrupt and godless business Kirin only in it for themselves. The people of Kira will stop them from turning the realm into their play thing of that, I am sure, but what I am less sure about is the subservience activities of this heretic, Rising Sun. For the moment she entered Vermilion, I knew that she had but one goal in her mind, to destroy the way of fire and replace it with her own heresy that she calls the Rising Fire. She and her misguided followers believe that their individual communities share a deeper connection with Concord than a divine matriarch, that the word of the goddess herself can be deciphered by the common care instead of needing the interpretation of educated and trained priests and scholars. Though she did her best to hide it today, I'm sure that this harlot sees the weakening of her matriarch's authority as a blessing, a way to weaken the righteous grasp of the way of fire over the realm, allowing her to spread her heresy far and wide. What concerns me the most about rising sun is her cunning. Any sensible and respectable Kieran would immediately denounce heresy against Concord, but Rising Sun has managed to trick countless thousands of Kieran into following her beliefs. Her mind is sharp, her tongue quick, and her eyes seem to be see everything at once. I've seen her work at the plenum ever since our hopeless premier mistakenly saw fit to allow her delegation to participate. She's shrewd and cunning and plays off of the other delegation to get what she wants. She pretends to support the way of fire and the matriarch when it's convenient, and abandons him when it is not. All the while, supports campaign in the city, ever deepening their entrenchment in the capital of the realm. Or that I had the power of the first matriarch, Iridescence Dawn, uh, who could subdue foes with her words and whose talents of theology and rhetoric were unmatched in all the realm, who could, uh, who could talk a Nurkin out of the rage when all other methods failed, or that I could use her skills to dismantle this her heretic sect on the plenum floor to make the rest of the realm see how close we are to falling to heresy. Every second that we enter the, entertain the rising sun, the rising sun, oh, oh, rising fire, is another moment it has to strengthen its position. Something has to be done sooner rather than later. Otherwise, all is lost. Also, it seems like I'm stockpiling physical power. That's because I am. I actually am stockpiling all of it. Um, I would like pop some more political power every day, but I'd rather uh, be lying down here too. The role of the way of the fire vis a vis the state. Since the creation of the Vermilion realm, the nation has been ruled as a theocracy. The way, with the way the fire and the Concord's teachings inextricably entwined with every facet of governance in daily life. But now a proposal is crossing the planet floor to extricate the inextricable. Is it possible to partially secularize this entity's old theocracy, or is it a mere suggestion of that possibility? Nothing but heresy. So, now we've done that. We can't do this one because it has to be March to May. My bad. March to May. You have political power, stability, you lose factory output, but that's fine. This one's actually worth doing. The Mid-Autumn Festival is one of the most important festivals in all the realm. Marking a time to celebrate a successful harvest and prepare for this dry season. Granting holidays to our hard-working Kieran throughout the realm will greatly boost our spirits and allow every Kieran to return to work following the festival, refreshing and committed to creating a new and better Kieran tomorrow. Bolster the way of life. 
centuries ago. The way of fire united, unified the Kirin people in a way no warlord or diplomat had ever achieved before. Our faith in Concord and a divine uh, avatar, the Matrix Spirit, allows us to come together as a peaceful nation and reject the violent urges of the New York State. In these frightening new times, however, faith in the way of fire is fading, especially after the harsh stagnation of the silence. We must take every effort to reconnect the common current throughout the realm with the teachings and tenets of the way of fire. If we were to maintain peace and stability in our realms, which uh, this is going to cost 25% more every time we take it, but I definitely want us to take it because we need more stability. Arts and Culture Campaign, the greatest way to connect with our fellow Kirin, to allow new ideas to be spread, and to express our cultural identity as a unifying force is through an Arts and Culture Campaign. Fairs, exhibits, tours, and all sorts of means of bringing Kirin together will be directly organized and funded by the government in Vermilion in the hopes of stabilizing the nation and smoothing over any rough patches in the modernization process. Which You get a flat 25% stability for 70, day, 70 days, which is great, and bureaucratic bottleneck. The beginning factions and cliques in the Morning Secretary have greatly hampered the implementation of the Grand Gallop onward, according to Premier Autumn Blaze's vision. Using our allies in the Reform Bureau, we shall temporarily frustrate efforts from competing parties to derail our agenda, allowing the Premier to force through important legislation that will aid in stabilizing the nation, which, like I said, I kind of want to go see what supremacist path is like, so... This is Italy Wheaton, the crisis of faith in the Morning Secretariat. But we're going to read about restoring the bureaucracy first. Following the imposition of the silence, the system of bureaucrats and administrators that allow the nation to function as a cohesive whole has since collapsed. It's time to appoint new advisors, governors, and administrators to once more take on the control of the realm, bringing the various local administrations back under the matrix control and restarting the economy. More political, way more political power, 20%. My god, amazing. We're more weekly stability. Oh god, way more consumer goods. Oh my goodness. Agency upgrade time, too, huh? And slightly more research time. The crisis of faith. And lastly, I'd like to propose the official separation of the functions of the way of fire from the functions of the state. Autumn Blaze snapped out of her daydreaming. Fickle Kern said in a proposal bringing her squarely back into reality. She wasn't alone in that. The rest of the Kern assembled in the plenum audibly gasped, including some of the Kern's own clique, and none more so than Winter Frost's traditional sect. We didn't expect business and industry to be beholden to the teachings of the way of fire when her religious fundamentals were laid down before modernization of today's scale was scarcely dreamed of. Current continue pushing on with a firm voice against the agitations of the plenum. Modernization relies squarely on one thing, and that's the free-flowing river of currency from the hooves and the buyers under the hooves at the seller. When we're talking about the modernization of the present, thousands of tons of gold will exchange hooves in a season, and all it has to be accounted for. Splitting off a portion of this gold and teeth will hamper the rapid pace of modernization. What use does Concord have for gold, I ask you? If we move forward as a nation and as a society, the stranglehold Concord's temples have on our economy must be loosened for the greater good. I therefore move that the teeth be abolished and sacred land sell by template temples and monasteries be opened up for public use and private investment in an effort to speed up the modernization of the realm. You know what, I'm going to click on this one anyways, because we get a flat 25%. That'll give us more stability and more political power. You reject your tradition, Winterfrost screamed, and Autumn felt her gut clench as the priestess briefly flickered with fire and fury. You do not know what it means to be a Karen. You are a foreigner trying to shape a nation in the image of heathens. Have you traded Concord's divine spark for a griffin's boundless greed? The temperatures in the plenum rose, both figuratively and literally, as tempers began to flare. Thankfully, it was Rain Shine who stepped forward and put a stop to the brewing catastrophe merely by standing up. When the plenum fell silent, she noted her eyes that every Karen assembled, you will calm yourselves by Concord's grace, she ordered, and her followers obeyed. Then she turned to Autumn Blaze. Premier, this is your disagreement to settle. Let us settle and move on, lest we lose ourselves to anger. Before she could speak, however, rising sun stepped forward. Premier, before you make your decision, if I may, she said, bowing her head despite the jeers of her contemporaries and rivals. Concord is Kyria, and Kyria is Concord. We cannot separate the two. Ooh. The way the fire works centuries ago, but a secular hoop is needed to move on. Modify it. Better just by world goes times. Ooh. Okay, so modify the all care and plenum for national revival by more supremacy and daily uh, daily political power gain. Let the rising sun speak. Ooh. I kind of want this one. We're kind of going this way anyways now. Um... Uh... I might play this campaign several different times, we'll see. And we do need to open up ports too. Oh, we had a research slot down here, which is really good to get as well, but... Um, I kind of want to come down here to get more, even more political power in the Imperial Constitution. But of course we need this one too. Road of Vermilion. Modify Agarian Society. Just your concern. We could really use that, but even then, we don't have really good research speed, anyways. The Charter of Rights. <laughs> As we move away from the society of our past to the society of a modern age, 
we have the opportunity to learn from the struggles of other nations. Industrialization was often brutal in the labors that fueled it, and protections for these workers only came after they were forced to endure unimaginable su uh, suffering. Let us guarantee protections for our workers so they not have to uh, needlessly suffer as well. Piracy in the South Caribbean Sea. For years, ships sailing across the eastern coast of Zebraka have skirted around the desolated or isolated coast of the Rav Mokiro, avoiding the pirate den of the Auburn Isle by taking the ships out into deeper waters. But now, pirate activity in the Kieran Sea has increased dramatically, and so the attacks on foreign vessels. As the realm of Kira undergoes its breakneck modernization following the ending of the silence, the pirates of Auburn Isle have lashed out with a desperate frenzy of raids and attacks, seeing as if they seek to delay the inevitable by seizing as much loot as they possibly can. As the problem spirals out of control, it is becoming increasingly clear that the waters around the realm of Kiri are dangerous, and any ships sailing around eastern Zebraka should be well prepared to fend off attacks until the situation is brought under control. The Kira must regain control of the waters. That sucks. That really sucks. So yeah, we'll do the charts of rights and then the laws of the realm. I'm just going to race through here. It's going to hurt stability a little bit more, but right now we're only losing point... We're actually, well, technically we're getting point 0.5 right now. Um... We're going to lose a little bit more political power. We're going to need political power later. Um, but I really don't want to lose any more stability. And I really want to increase it. One and a half a week is actually really good. We've got to get, keep it as high as we can for now. Because I'll promise you this. It's going to go down later. It really is. But what do we have? Oh, I think there. Okay, cool. The laws of the realm. While we've moved to enact new laws and decrees to improve the standing of the realm, there are so many harsh laws that exist from the silence. One such law makes transforming into the New York State a capital offense punishable by death. <clears throat> Though loosely enforced throughout the silence, the debate rages on the necessity of this law as the realm modernizes at a rate never before seen. Unrest and fragrance. <clears throat> Fickle current slowly marched up the hill, or the stairs towards the burnt out town hall. Passing by scores of Kieran quietly sitting amongst the ashes in protest, their glares turning towards the Imperial Guards gathered around the perimeter. It was only his third time visiting fake Fragrance. His family was ancestral from hometown, but this time became an ally in the government. As soon as the news of the unrest in Kira's once largest city reached for millions, Kern had immediately volunteered his time to go and resolve the matter on the matriarch's behalf. As a procession of automobiles navigated the dirt roads between Vermilion and Fragrance, he had taken the time to read up on any information for Fragrance he could get his hooves on, as far as the reports went. <clears throat> Vermilion's attempt to assert its authority over its distant urban centers had been met with resistance and Fragrance, where the city's elected council refused to accede power to the Vermilion envoys up to the moment they were forcibly removed from the envoys' guard detail. The bad blood between Fragrance and Vermilion had boiled over, and so a few narrow transformations had reduced the town hall to centers. Now, the Kieran protested, by peacefully sitting in the courtyard of the demolished town hall, but the conviction in their beliefs had not died down in the slightest. After asking around, Curran shortly found himself directed to Cherry Blossom, the city's mayor and organizer behind the protest. She looked up from the papers on her table as Curran approached and frowned at him. If you hear from Vermilion, then you might as well turn around and tell me the matriarch, or tell the matriarch, that we won't talk until our laptops are gone, she growled. Fragrance refuses to negotiate with the sons of Vermilion. What about a son of Fragrance who will turn your rags back into riches? Curran sat down across from her and sat, sat down by his side, and my grandparents lost everything when the silence ravaged our city. Just like yours, but I'm back to make it right again. My friends are powerful, and they are driving force behind the repeal of the silence and the return of a fragrance industry. You my word as a delegate of the plenum and a devoted son of fragrance that I will do everything in my power to return our city to its former glory by shipping Vermilion policy from within. All I ask of you is to stand back and watch until watch by stand by until our moment of glory comes. Cherry Blossom scowled, but after a moment she nodded in agreement. If you can save fragrance, then by all means do so, she said, but no, it'll take a lot of from Vermilion to undo a hundred years of suffering. Fragrance will not be humiliated a second time. Nor will it be you have my word. Who needed stability? Yeah, this one would be nice to do, but I just don't want to lose that weekly stability. Ah, the Charter of Rights, eh? From good old Fickle Current, it pleases me to see the progress we've made in modernizing the realm when we have the right cure to guide the process. Our latest victory was a Charter of Rights when I saw pass through the plenum. Kira's legal system was a mess, but what is to be expected of a hopeless theocracy? The nation was held together by hundreds, if not thousands, of vague religious rulings and conflicting interpretations of Concord's divine will. This made it very hard for an enterprising Kieran to maneuver in the system. What one mystic thinks is acceptable may be completely unacceptable to another. And in disputes such as these, mystics and priests immediately defer to their higher authority without question. In most cases, that ends up being the matrix peer giving her ultimate decision making authority over the realm. But now, with the Charter rights passed, the Way of Fire no longer holds such absolute authority over the land. The Charter is a single codified document free of confusing and vague religious statutes that explicitly lay down the word of law. Of course, I have made sure that such a card was not too restricting in its legal ease. There is space to maneuver, semantics to exploit, and technicalities to find all perfectly legal within the law for a Kieran clever enough to find them. 
I even managed to score crucial victories for private property rights, freeing much of Akiran's wealth and assets from mandatory teas to the way of the fire. I'll use this tax that would cripple investments and incentives for any businesses trying to operate in the realm. This has been undeniably a win for capitalism, and the future of Kira is looking bright. But there is always room to improve. Uh, a good business, Kieran, will not settle for reducing their taxes to 20% when they could instead be 15% with enough pushing and prodding. Despite the influence they wield over the Charter, Premier Autumn Blaze and her allies still manage to include provisions for labor rights and civic freedoms. These are the sort of things that are good to have in a developed nation where they can be afforded, but Kira is not a developed nation. We are poor and agir, and these reforms stand in the way of the progress, but at any rate, I only see them as temporary obstacles. Autumn is hopelessly outclassed by her job, and I cannot help but feel sorry for the poor mayor. She is young and clueless how, to, how the world works. She only earned the position because Matriarch Rain uh, Shine feels indebted to her for some reason. I fully expect her support to evaporate as she continues to blunder her way through the plenum, and when that happens, I have enough support to replace her as an next premier. I do a much better job than her, that is something every Kieran can agree with, and that also affords me the opportunity to make a few changes that benefit those who have given the most for the most of the modernization of the realm. I know many partners and connections who would benefit greatly if those labor rights were removed from the Charter, for instance. Oh boy. Laws of the realm. November and repeal of the Quiescence. 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 The Quiescence was a series of decrees that went along with the silence that was banned that, that the study of re science, religion, and philosophy, and many other forms of education in the realm. As a result, our society is stagnated, and much of the populace is illiterate. If we wish to educate a new generation of Kirin, the Quiescence must be, repaid, it must be repealed in its entirety. Yeah. Ooh. That's still going up by 0.6 for now. The letters of the law. The plan now moves into a matter of evaluation of laws passed as part of the silence's decrees. <clears throat> Autumn Blaze said, pulling the next proposal across her desk and skimming over the brief attached to it. <laughs> Fickle Current, since this is your proposal, how do you about to get us started? Gladly, the industrialist said, and standing up, took to the podium to address his fellow delegates. Members of the plenum, we have already gone so far in revoking and repealing many of the ill-advised decrees that constituted the hundred-year decay that brought our nation to where it stands today, he said. The faults in these decrees were easy to see and were dismissed accordingly. Likewise, the laws that filled in the spaces between matriarch and noctilicent charmed decrees should also be removed. Some of these laws explicitly ban little things like singing, dancing, and loud talking in public, and I think even Princess Winter Frost will agree with me that these measures are archaic and unnecessary in today's curio. Others laws, such as the banning of independent hierarchical organizations and capital punishment for near transformations, though seldom of force, should likewise be removed. We must allow our society to grow with our nation and these restrictions instead stunt it. Make near transformation a misdemeanor like public intoxication and do away with the rest, and we'll be one step closer to a functional modern society. Though most care not in agreement, Winter Frost rose her, to voice her counterpoints. Well, I may personally agree that some of these restrictions are trivial. Were they not Concord's divine inter inten intention? Passed through her previous avatar, Matriarch Charm, she began. Removing them would be a blasphemy, and it is not up to us to decide what should be done. That is Matriarch Rain Shine's decision, not ours. We must outright reject your proposal to remove the capital punishment on New York Transformation's current. We need a strong deterrent to prevent the transformation into the New York State now more than ever. Remove that and we only feed more fuel to the fire. Our tempers will flare, and even another bout of near transformations will be the calamity that sees all our progress permanently undone. There's not a risk we can afford to take, and so the only way to control is to punish it with the harshest penalty imaginable. So, care of the plenum, do we abandon the safeguards that prevented the complete destruction of our nation a century ago, or do we remember our traditions and reasons why these safeguards were implemented in the first place? We must modernize with the nation. Ooh, we get a crap ton of political power. These laws were passed for a reason, and that reason is still valid today. Who needs to build? An imperial constitution. It's time to draft a constitution that will lay out the powers and privileges of each branch of our government. The authority of the matrix imperial will be defined, and responsibilities of the morning secretary laid out. However, the realm lacks a modern judicial system, and it is up to the premier to come up with a proposal for one that will be best serve the interests of the realm. So we're going to lose even more weekly stability, which sucks. Breaking my heart. Typical. We get 5% more political power, but we lose 0.1 political power, but it does help our research speed, which is not nothing really, we really need right now. <sighs> but it's all worth it. One year of progress. Fireworks blasted out from the sky, exploding in the night in a vibrant and dazzling array of colors. <clears throat> Premier Autumn Blaze and Matriarch Superior Rain Shine watched them with both awe and reverence. Fireworks were not only pretty, they were an important tool in giving homage to the fire goddess Concord. Between the pops and bangs, music, singing, and the stomping of hooves could be heard throughout Vermilion. It was the first day of the new year and one of the most important days on Kyria. And for now, at least Kyria had still reason to celebrate. Kieran had changed so much in the past year, Rain Shine remarked, so many new ideas and innovations had entered the lives of every Kieran, from the most respected priestess to the lowest farmer. And despite the upheaval, things have been relatively calm, wouldn't you agree, Autumn? Of course, Autumn said, the colorful lights of fireworks reflecting off her head scales as she nodded. Things were, going, were rough for a bit when we started our changes, but they mostly leveled out now. 
Once we got past the initial inertia, the changes we've been implementing have been more successful than not. And let us hope that they continue to be successful, Rainshine said. The Plenum and the Reform Bureau have done wonderful work in making sure that the new reforms are well thought out and feasible, and that it makes it easy, easier for my subjects to adapt to them. If we keep up this good work, we may be able to finish the three and a half year plan without any great societal turmoil. I certainly hope you're right, Matriarch. Um, we do need to do that one eventually. An industrial convocation. <coughs> if the realm wants to leapfrog over a hundred years of misprogress and modernization, then it'll need Kieran educated and trained abroad to make it happen. Fickle Current will use his literati ties to the Kieran diaspora to bring many of the Kieran species' best and brightest minds hope home to help modernize the nation and let a hundred flowers blossom. That was a usual nice change of pace. Autumn Blaze noted to gather her fellow leaders of the plenum together for dinner after a successful and mostly argument free day. It was a good day to remind every Kieran that they were all on the same team and they all wanted to modernize Kyria. Just because they had different ideas on how to go about it, they weren't supposed to be enemies in the process. She'd hoped that today would be another one of those days where Winter Frost and Fickle Current could stop going at each other's throats for an evening over a shared enjoyment of a good meal, but it was clear that things weren't going according to plan. Repealing the quiescence was supposed to be a good step forward, Winter Frost bemoaned. Opening up the study of science, religion, and philosophy was supposed to be foster renewed vigor in the exploration of the way of fire, but Rising Sun and her heretics had hijacked it for their own agenda. They're using modern printing presses to print thousands of copies of her incandescent will, a text that was banned for good reason before the silence, under the guise of freedom of speech. They twist Concord's divine will to suit their own heretical interpretations of a communist communalistic society. Who knows how many righteous followers that harlots corrupted with their blasphemy? She should have been run out of Vermilion the moment she showed her face in the Matrix Holy Presence. Fickle Current reimagined or remained unsympathetic. Perhaps if your fellow mystics did not show progress, rising sun would not be out competing you, he said. You fear printing presses and the interventions of modern society. You try to copy the teachings of the way of fire by hoof and horn with quill and ink and act. Surprised when rising sun's followers print a thousand copies of her text for every one of yours? Perhaps this is why the way of the fire is losing influence while the rising fire grows ever stronger. Winter Frost slammed her hooves down on the table and abruptly stood up, glaring at Fickle Current. If you will not support Concord's teachings and her holy will, then I'll not share a meal with you. She growled, much to Autumn's dismay. I am leaving, she turned to Autumn, only to say goodnight, Premier, and then stormed out of the restaurant without waiting for her meal to arrive. Big sad. Fickle Current merely shrugged and watched her go, keeping his thoughts to himself. So much for a nice dinner with her peers. At least we ended with political power, even though we lost stability. Uh, Bolster of the way of fire. It's 87. Uh, actually, is there a thing here that'll help reduce the cost of everything that we have? I don't think there is. Um, that kind of sucks that there is not one that does that, but that's why I've been so focused on political power. It doesn't give us more weekly population growth, which is actually pretty good. But, so even though we have a core population of 20 million, which is honestly not that much. So uh, Regardless, I'm going to choose this one again because we're going to beat the crap out of our stability. So. If you enjoyed the video, though, the first video of us playing as a Realm of Curia, please consider leaving a like, a subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to see what goes on with the Realm of Curia. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.